So I've had my Tormach PCNC 1100 here in the garage for a while now and thought I would put together a video about what it was like having it shipped, delivered, getting it down the hill into the garage and getting it set up and maybe make a few comments on some things I had not seen videos made on already. First off, when Tormach ships the machine and its accessories, the accessories are shipped separately. The machine, its stand, the sheet metal that makes up the coolant catch basin, they all come as freight. The accessories, like the power draw bar, the arms here attached to the machine, things of that nature, they all ship via some of their carrier, UPS, something like that. So, if you are getting the lift bar for use with an engine crane to put the machine up on its stand, you'll want to make sure that you arrange the delivery of the accessories in such a way that they get there the same day or prior to the machine arriving. Otherwise, you'll have the machine, but you'll have no lift bar with which to put it up on its stand. Uh, on the lift bar, if you have a, another device like a load balancer for an engine, you might think, well, you could use that to balance the load because the load is not centered on the mount points on the machine. You might think you could use that to balance the load. First off, you would need to make certain that your load balancer is rated for the weight of the machine. If the load balancer is meant to operate with two or three hundred pound engines, it's probably not going to do so well with a thirteen hundred pound mill. Further, the load balancer is going to take up some vertical space. So your lift has an arm and it can lift up and down. When you put the load balancer in there, it's going to take up some vertical height. In my particular case, with my engine lift, it was too much. If, you had, if I had used the engine balancer with it, so much vertical space had been taken up that I wouldn't have gotten the machine up high enough to set on its stand. The lift kit is effectively a big piece of metal with a couple of hooks on it. So it consumes the minimum vertical distance that you can get away with and rig the machine up for lifting. When they deliver the machine, it will be in on two palletized things. Uh, the machine itself will be in a crate that has effectively lots of plywood nailed onto the bottom to make it pallet-like so that it can be lifted with things like pallet jacks or forklifts or some such. The stand and the sheet metal for the catch basin are on another one. They're banded together so they're effectively one big pallet, but they're two separate crates. Now, the one with the machine actually has a lift from this side uh, stenciled onto it. When they deliver it, the company will deliver it to the curb. I don't believe they are insured beyond the curb. It, it would depend on the specific company and what Tormox agreement with them is. However, this means that they're likely only going to deliver to your curb. So if you're in a situation like me and you have a driveway that's somewhere around 160 feet that actually slopes down, they're not going to take it down a driveway for you. So if they're feeling generous, they might, but in my particular case, that pretty much wasn't going to happen. So they'll deliver it to the curb, and getting it into the garage is your responsibility. In my case, I have a significant driveway with a significant slope. The driveway doesn't slope evenly either. It comes, it goes down, it levels out again, and it goes down again. I believe they do this for erosion control. Having it stepped prevents the water from picking up too much speed on the way down. So the issue came up, how do I get this 1,350 pound crate down the driveway? I looked at getting a pallet jack and using the pallet jack, jacking up the crate, taking it down the driveway. After doing the math, I have around a 12 degree slope and everything considered I'd be looking at about a 300 pound force acting laterally, pulling the machine down the hill. That simply wasn't gonna, gonna work out. I looked at pallet jacks that had brakes on them. They would cost a fantastic amount of money to buy. I couldn't find anyone that was renting one. And it just, it just felt like a really bad proposition all around. The driveway I have is mostly flat, but it, it curves and has some humps in it on the way down. There's a sanitary sewer lid that bulges up out of the driveway a bit. So how to get it down? The first thing that came to mind is forklift. There are two general kinds of forklifts. You have industrial forklifts, which are the kinds of things that you see in Home Depot moving stuff around shelves. They are typically meant to operate on relatively flat, smooth surfaces. They, they can do a little bit of slope, 
the kinds of slope that you would find on a loading ramp. But in my particular case, they weren't too, too an appealing option. Now, the other kind of forklift-like machine is a construction-style forklift or a skid steer loader. You see things like Bobcat or Case, they're little earth movers and they have buckets on them and we typically see them around moving dirt in small areas. Well, you can rent these machines and these machines have a variety of attachments and one of the very common ones is a set of pallet forks. So you can use them to lift loads and move them around like a forklift. Uh, of note, the load rating of the machine when using the bucket and, and lifting in that mode may be different than the machine's rating when using pallet forks. So you'll want to check on that if you're renting this kind of machine. The easiest thing to do is just call up the company that you want to rent this from and say, hey, I need a skid steer loader that can lift uh, 1,400 pounds with a, with a set of pallet jacks on it. And around here, what I ended up doing, there's a company that would rent me the skid steer loader and they would deliver it and they would pick it up so I didn't have to worry about getting the machine here. I didn't have to worry about renting a trailer and a truck to drive it here. They dropped it off, used the machine, said, hey, I'm done. They came back, picked it up, took it away. I also rented a pallet jack with uh, my skid steer loader. So they came, they delivered it to the curb, both pallets. I uh, had a guy who I have to do a lot of work on the house, a uh, contractor. He's much more familiar with these kinds of machines than I am. And I asked him, I said, hey, can I pay you to come out and drive this machine around? Uh, which is a really good idea because I turned out to be very, very sick the day the machine was delivered. So he came out, no issues whatsoever. We got the machines onto the lift, took it down the hill, no issue. Now when you get to the garage, in my case I was putting it in the garage, there may not be enough room to get your forklift into the garage. When you rent industrial equipment like these skid steer loaders, it's much like renting a car. You don't rent a specific model of car, you rent a class of car. But with a skid steer loader, you're renting a class of skid steer loader. So you don't know exactly what the height clearance on the machine is until it actually gets here. And in my case, I think I have 80 something inches vertical clearance and that wasn't gonna be enough for this particular loader to get in, which is why I've gone ahead and rented the pallet jack in advance. So use the skid steer loader, got it to the garage. Once it was in the garage, use the pallet jack, move around within the garage. So once you've, once you've got it in and you're going, you're putting the stuff together, Every, everything went pretty well. The couple of areas I had problems with was, uh, I mentioned before, the, the vertical clearance, getting enough lift height out of the, the engine crane to get it up on the stand. Other people have commented already that the legs on an engine lift, I think mine are about seven and a half inches tall from the ground, will not fit underneath the stand for the machine. Many people have commented on this before. The fix is that you effectively jack the stand up and put blocks underneath the feet. Well, I encountered an additional issue. I couldn't get the legs of my lift un under and around the feet, even when jacked up, in such a way that the mill could be lowered onto its mounting points. So what I did was I took out, I took off one of the feet and had replaced it with a jack. So I jacked up the, the corner of the stand in a different place and took the foot off and that gave me enough room to get the lift underneath the stand so I could load, lower the mill on it. Another note about lifts and mills. If you're accustomed to perhaps using these lifts with a couple hundred pounds, maybe 300 pound loads, it's a very different experience when you're picking up 1300 something pounds. If there are any imperfections on the floor, if there uh, is any slope, you're going to encounter a lot of problems moving this lift around. It's very, very difficult to move this style of lift with so much weight loaded up on it. Another thing that I've seen in several videos of people installing their mills onto the stand is they, they lurch the, the engine lift. There's so much weight that they really have to put a lot of force behind it to get it to move. This is, this is actually kind of scary if you do it, especially with, with my floor and how much force you would need for that. The mill being suspended on its chains, when you push the stand, the mill wants to remain stationary, so it swings. And then when you stop pushing, it, it's going to swing in the opposite direction. It's going to want to pull the stand. It's, it's kind of scary. There's no need to do this. I actually used a 2x4 
and levered it underneath the base of the stand so I could apply a very large amount of force over a very short distance so I could do very fine positioning and, and very good control of the mill, of the load, as I was moving it around. So there's no need to jerk or, or shove uh, your lift. You can just get something, lever it from the base, you can make small movements gradually, you'll get it there, it'll be great. No need to, to make the mill swing, that's really scary. A couple of things once you are ready to start attaching things to the stand. I had a lot of problems with the powder coating on the stand and the sheet metal parts that make up the catch basin. The powder coat had just filled some holes. Some you could, you could see that, oh, there's a hole here, but it's not quite as large as the others. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll drill it out, or I'll get a, a countersink bit and run it just a little to clear the powder coat out. There was one particular case where a hole had been completely filled by the powder coat and I actually called up Tormach's technical support because I was trying to install, I think it was the automated oiler, automatic oiler, and I said, I don't, I don't see the mount points for this. And they said, well, with the sand that you have, they should be there, and they told me the position, and ultimately I found it, but it had been completely filled in, the whole thing. So look out for that, and you'll, you'll want to verify every single hole on the sheet metal parts and on the stand before you start bolting things on because once you start bolting things on and then you realize later, ah crud, I really need to clean this out, it, it becomes a really big issue because you've already got parts on the machine, you may have to take some of them off to get in a really good position to clean them out. It's, uh, it's really annoying. But once that's taken care of, everything went together fine. Uh, a last note on accessories. The Accessories that Tormach ships are shipped with all of the parts necessary to make them work with any of the machines that they're listed for. So if a part is listed as working with the 700 and the 1100 series mill, they will give you all of the parts necessary to install it. So even if you only have the 1100, and let's say you ordered these accessories as part of your 1100 order, there's going to be part, there may be parts in, with that accessory to install on the 700 series machine. So you may have extra parts left over when you're done, and that can be a little disconcerting. If you read the instructions and check all of the parts in advance, you can see, aha, I'm going to have these extra bits and pieces left over. And that may just be because they are parts for a different model of the machine. Now, even if a part is only compatible with, let's say, the 1100, the bigger machine, there still may be extra parts. Some, depending on the accessory that you order, some of the machines will have provisions for certain accessories already in them. So if you get an accessory and you have a, the newest machine, you may find that there's these extra parts. Well, those parts may in fact be for an older version of the same machine, so an older version of the 1100 perhaps, and that older version didn't have things tapped out or it used a different kind of um, fastener in a particular location. For whatever reason, it's different even though they're the same model, the 1100. They're different series and they have different ways of mounting the accessories. So you may have those parts that come with your accessories as well. Just be careful, look through, make sure that you know which parts you're going to be using with your machine and everything should go together just fine. Um, if anyone has any questions about uh, anything I might not have answered about what it was like to get the machine down uh, a steep driveway and install in a standard two-car garage, uh, just let me know, and I'll try to give an answer that is useful.